what we're going to look at today is Flamingo NXT texture mapping and decals and beforehand in order to do that we're just using the uh, Visual Arc architectural plugin in Rhino 4 just to uh, provide us with this little uh, block uh, architectural model. So what we've done is we've built a number of construction lines to begin with just to illustrate the uh, surrounding perimeter of this building. You can see I've grabbed it there. Then we've used the Visual Arc uh, Walls by Curve tool. and You can sort of see I've got it highlighted there in yellow from curves. As soon as I've selected that curve it will apply a wall to it and in this particular case I set the wall as a four-story building at approximately 10 meters so correction a three-story building. I put a series of windows in it just to give us a wall surface that we can use for this little tutorial. Okay now what we've done Oh, and the important thing to remember with Visual Arc Geometry, once you've built the geometry, if you are applying texture maps to it or if you're exporting it into other programs, remember to press the Explode key twice uh, to uh, remove the parametric elements and it will churn, turn it into uh, Rhino surfaces which have all, operate using the standard Rhino commands and then export accordingly. So in this particular case, there's our little base model to begin with. So just basically a large wall surface with a few windows in it. Now we're going to the Flamingo NXT control panel, selecting the Materials tab. There's our pre-selected view. And currently it's just a plain form material, but we're going to apply a bitmap texture to that wall surface. Uh, we're looking to have a, grunt, uh, a, a, a weathered brickwork surface in the foreground of our image. So in this particular case, I have a selection of materials on my computer. I'm just pre-checking it in Adobe Bridge. Hunting down our material there. There's our brickwork that we're going to apply to that wall surface with weathered plaster at the bottom of it. We then go and hunt down that material and we're making a new texture set material. We click on that. Then we go to the textures tab. And in this case it's already pre-selected but I'm just leading you through the steps. We left click on one of those little squares and there's the material that I've added previously. I adjust the scale of that bitmap until it gets to approximately the scale that I want on my model. I'm using a standard uh, mapping and then next to it just to add depth and textures because it's going to be a foreground element I'm also adding a displacement map which is the same material adjusted it's a grayscale image of the same material adjusted to the same uh, size and then I click displacement. The displacement settings are on default but they can be adjusted to any particular depth which adds a significant three-dimensional effect to any materials that I have in the foreground of my image. So there's my original surface finish and here's that surface finish with the bitmap applied. So it makes a significant change, particularly the things in the foreground of any architectural visualization. A lot more realistic detail in that regard. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a decal to that surface. So it's a, a picture or a bitmap that goes over the top of the base texture material. You press F3, well you select a material, press F3 to get the object's material uh, menu. Scroll down on the little pull down at the top there. And there we go and you'll see that there's a number of attributes and you're selecting the Flamingo NXT decals tab. Okay, what we want to do is add uh, some graffiti or a logo to the wall and we also want to add grunge or dirt over the top of that, uh, both the wall and the logo. So I've already hunted that, down those elements and stored them in my file. In this particular case I'm using the Rhino menu. 
sorry, the Rhino logo and uh, a textured base material to give the appearance of dirt. First thing we do is we select that material under the DTEX, uh, the, uh, the, the object materials tab, go and hunt down that particular image, then we press the color masking tab at the top right hand corner there. You can see as we adjust the sensitivity on that image we can take increasing amounts of the image on or off the particular decal and you can see that highlighted in green there. Okay, I can adjust the transparency, the saturation, all range of elements in there and now we need to place that decal so we, in this particular case, we're just adjusting it on the image. We've momentarily lost it, we forgot to select it so we'll just hunt it down very quickly again. So just to recap, okay, we source the image you can see the, the bit in blue is the bit we want to lose, so we select colour masking, pick the eyedropper, click it on the blue surface, adjust the sensitivity until we lose all of the blue but keep the majority of the logo, adjust the transparency slightly so we can see the, the brickwork underneath just a little bit, then we click the left hand and the right hand edge, adjust the decal on the surface as we see fit to get it in the right location, then the important thing here is you have to click a control point twice, left click. So the first one says select control point, second one says pick point, left click each time, then press enter and you'll see it comes up on the objects properties box. You can see the logo there. Okay, now what we're going to do, all right, sorry, you can see now that's the result. There's the Rhino logo just slightly transparently added over the top of the brickwork texture. Okay, now we, what we want to do is add a dirt finish or a grunge finish over the top of both those. So we're going to hunt down a second decal. There it is, grunge. Place it on the image. Check the objects properties, we want to remove the white from the image, so we select colour, masking again, click the eyedropper, click it on the white portion, the green bit is the bit that's being masked, M mask, sorry, and you can see we're losing the majority of that white surface, we're increasing the transparency of the decal, so it show the what's underneath it shows through it partially, okay there's the map that we want, place, left click, drag it across to get the width, then we're just going to adjust the image and we can you can see there there's the decal being applied to that surface. Click the bottom corner then click again and then enter to place that decal. You can see it shows up on the objects property box. Now we want to move that up so it's not underneath the Rhino logo so it's at the top of the image so we see through that there's the two in order now and here's the result that we get at the end of the day so you can sort of see a quite complex build up of textures now we have the grunge material the rhino logo and the underlying brickwork all combining together to give our surface finish particularly useful when we've got a highlight element or something in the foreground of our architectural visualization okay so uh, just to recap uh, what we've gone through today, okay, we've been talking about uh, textured material sets, okay, and in order to do that, we're applying textured materials using the new texture set material. We're applying a base image of the material, and then we're also applying a displacement map. To that material. Same size, same image, one's a grayscale, they combine together and there we have our quite de you know quite three-dimensional texture set. Then we're applying decals using the object properties box which is F3. Hunt down the various elements to it, left click, drag to get the width of the decal, drag it up into position, and voila, you have your materials.